Yes. How we give you the praise today. How we celebrate the resurrection of the King of Glory today. That the powers of death and hell could not hold him back. On a bright Sunday morning, your power came down from heaven and gave him life. And the body came back to life again. Hell could not hold him back. The devil could not hold him back. Death could not hold him back. And so Jesus Christ has risen. He's risen. He's risen. He's alive today, Lord. So we we'll give you the praise. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That our victory is found in the cross, found in the death and the resurrection of Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And you know, Lord, all over the world, there are lots of people who claim to be God. They claim to have died for their people, but they are still buried in their graves. They have not risen and they will never rise because they were mere human beings. But we thank you that there is one that death could not conquer. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. How we love you, God. How we praise you. How we worship you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Amen. The Savior has risen. There's somebody by your side. The Savior has risen. Your Savior has risen. And my Savior has risen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. And Dora has risen too. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. All right. You may be seated. God bless you. Good to see your beautiful and handsome faces. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Hey, lots of you have risen too. I can see Sister Ethel from Singapore. She has risen too. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Are you happy? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. If you are, why not begin to smile just to prove that you're happy? That you're happy that your Lord is alive. Death and hell could not hold him back. I will never be able to hold him back. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. All right, we are going to get started right away. And this morning, I want to speak of what I call the sacrifice that changes and empowers destiny. The sacrifice that changes and empowers destiny. It is important that you understand that your life has been empowered. For there is a sacrifice that brought you to pass. Your life has been empowered. It is not a religious cliche. It is not a nice saying. It is the reality that your life has been empowered. I want you to understand this morning as we, yes, Lord, I will do that. Thank you, Heavenly Father that you will give every one of us right now the spirit of understanding. It is one of your spirits, oh God. And so we make a demand right now on the manifestation, not the presence only, but the manifestation of the spirit of understanding, an excellent spirit that as you speak through me, the same anointing that flows through me but they are anointing upon your children and in your children to receive what you are releasing. We thank you. That my tongue is made like the pen of a ready writer. I will speak with simplicity and accuracy to the glory of your name. I will say only what you want me to say. Every external forces that may try to interfere is reprimanded right now. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. The sacrifice that, empower, that changes and empowers destiny. Are you here? From time immemoria, why, why don't we have people on the front seat here? We have just one person on the floor. What happened to the other?
people on the other seats. Are you leaving it for the angels? The angels are standing. They don't need to sit. So come forward. I shouldn't be saying it should have been done for the very beginning so we don't have to. Because the camera is on you and what the camera is showing is empty seats. So that is not a proper thing. All right? Gravitate to the front. Don't stay at the back. When I first began to go to church, I always liked to stay at the front. I, just, I would just run to the front. I kind of felt there was something special about the front. And I'm, I'm a front man. <laughs> I always run to the I never stayed at the back, never. Jesus is Lord. All right. From time, we have to start it again now. From, <laughs> from time immemorial, sacrifices have been used and always used by God to create and to unleash the manifestation of his will in the lives of his people. Sacrifices have been used by God, have been used by people to unleash what God has for them. As we go through the scriptures today, and as you read the scriptures on your own, you will discover that men and women of old had to activate what God had planned and released for them. The promise irrespective. There is a promise, but there must be an activation. Are you here? Just because it has been promised does not always release the manifestation. It must be activated. As we read through the scriptures, we'll find that men coming to God, or sometimes even God, showing up before men. And they will say to God, what is my destiny? What is your plan for me? And God will ask them, make a sacrifice. And I will release to you, I will reveal to you what shall be in the days to come. For example, a man called Abraham in the Bible God showed up before him, and God said, give me a sacrifice, make me an offering, and I will reveal to you your destiny. And the Bible says Abraham built an altar, sacrificed certain uh, animals on the altar that was acceptable at that time. And he stayed by it to watch the sacrifice to make sure it was not polluted by vultures and all kinds of negative uh, 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 interference. And while this was going on, he had a deep sleep. God gave him, put him into a deep sleep. And then God spoke to him and said to him, his descendants will go to a foreign land, the land of Egypt. And they were going to be there for 400 years, after which God will return them back to the land which he had given to Abraham, which is called the land of Canaan or the present day land of Israel. Now, the only reason Abraham got that revelation was because his sacrifice was made. Now, watch it. It was God's will. It was God that showed up before Abraham. Yet, he required a sacrifice for it to be released. Are you still here? It was God's will. Abraham didn't go to heaven. It was God that showed up before Abraham on the earth. Yet, he required a sacrifice for that particular insight to be released to Abraham. So all through scriptures, people have engaged in the ministry, uh, sorry, in the mystery of offering things to God in order to orchestrate or to set in motion what God had for them. Are you still here? And so, as we look at these scriptures this moment, I want us to first look at the meaning of the word sacrifice. What is, what is a sacrifice? What does it mean? A sacrifice is the surrender of something prized a prized possession in order to take possession of a desirable future. You surrender, you give, you release a prized possession in order to take possession of a prized destiny. In other words, a sacrifice connotes giving. You give something of a great value in order to receive something of an even greater value. 
You give something of a great value in order to receive something of an even greater value. Abraham gave those animals a sacrifice to God and he received a prophetic direction as to his future, the future of his descendants. And that was how they took over what is now called the land of Israel. Are you here? We give something of value, or something of a great value, in order to receive or obtain something of an even greater value. In Genesis chapter 2, I want us to begin to look at certain scriptures now as we build this up. In Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says from verses 21 and 22, let, let's turn there. Let's take it together. Genesis chapter number 2. And from verse 21, have you found it? The Bible says here, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. You see that? Adam needed something of a greater value in his life. And so God took something of a great value from him to create the desired future. One would have thought, well, God, you created Adam. Whatever you got the ribs from before, why not just go back there? But he didn't do that. Instead, he took from man. Why? Because you are the one that need it. Adam needed Eve. <laughs> are you here? Adam needed Eve. Without Eve, he was incomplete. So if you must become complete, you may have to give that something from your life to create your completion. Adam needed Eve. And so God took something of a great value. He gave his rib to God. And God used it to create something that was missing in his life. A sacrifice. He sacrificed to get his wife. He sacrificed to get his partner. He sacrificed to overcome loneliness. He was lonely. Now the scripture teaches that he had all kinds of animals out there. And they didn't really have any problems with Adam. But yet they were not good enough for Adam. So the dog was not good enough. The cats were not good enough. I'm not going there. A human being was needed. And so with what God took from Adam, because Adam gave it, Eve was created for him. A sacrifice that changes and empowers destiny. That sacrifice changed his destiny and also empowered his destiny. It is not enough for there to be a change. There must be an empowerment. Are you here? A sacrifice that changes destiny. In Genesis chapter 3, from verse 21, we have another account. This is the account of man committing the high treason by sinning against God. The Bible records in that entire chapter 3 of Genesis that after Eve had eaten of the fruit, the forbidden fruit, and gave a portion to Adam, they suddenly realized that they were exposed. Now, the Bible says naked. That's true. 
But I want to submit to you that it wasn't necessarily a physical nakedness. Because they were, already, they were always physically naked. Their spiritual covering was removed. Their spiritual sensitivity, their spiritual protection was removed. But because of their lack of understanding, they thought it was a physical covering. And so they went to sow fig leaves to cover themselves. But yet that did not do it. God had to sacrifice an animal to create a skin that covered them up. So for their protection, something was sacrificed. For shame to be removed from their lives, something was sacrificed. For them to continue and be able to fulfill God's desired destiny for them, something was sacrificed. Now I hope you are following the trend of thought. It is not just enough to desire something. There is something that we must do in order to release what God has done. All through the scriptures, that is what I have seen. For example, in Genesis chapter 12, God said to Abraham, he was Abraham at this time, verses 1 to 3, he spoke to him. He said, leave your country, leave your kindred, and go to a nation I will show you. There I will bless you. I will make you great. I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. And through you, the people, the nations, the ethnics of the world, of the earth, shall be blessed. What was the sacrifice? Leave your familiarity. Leave your family. Go to a land I will show you, a land you do not know. There I will bless you. Abraham had to sacrifice his relationship with his family members, with his familiarity. He had to abandon his familiarity and went to a land he did not know. It wasn't even a defined destination yet. Just a land I will show you. His obedience was the sacrifice. The willingness to abandon his familiarity. The willingness to let go the past. To pursue the future. That was the sacrifice. And that sacrifice changed his destiny. And that sacrifice empowered his destiny. And he possessed a land that is called the land of Israel. And without that, you and I will not be Christians today. The sacrifice that changes destiny. His destiny was changed and his destiny was empowered. And God, God spoke to Abraham in chapter 17 that his children will become like the sons of the seashore, the seashore, the stars in the sky. You and I are descendants of Abraham today. All believers on the face of the Christian believers, on the face of the earth, including the Jews themselves, are all descendants of Abraham today. But there was a sacrifice that brought this to pass. So you might have received a prophetic word from God. That's true. You might have desired something from God. That's true. But is there something you must do? Yes, there is something you must do. Prophecies are not necessarily self-fulfilling. It must be activated. Paul speaking to Timothy, he said to him, fight with the prophetic word that went out for you. Fight with it. So just because it has been spoken does not necessarily bring it to pass. We must fight with it. We must war with it. So that will require a sacrifice. A few years ago, I was having a prayer time, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, nothing is wrong with the spoken word. It is the receiver of the word that has a problem. He said, when I spoke in creation, creation heard it, and they believed and they obeyed. I spoke to the mountains, they came to the sea and all the animals. But when I speak to man, man does not accept it. So if man would accept what God speaks, there will be automation, there will be automatic manifestation. But because man does not always accept it, a sacrifice is required to set it in motion. Are you still here? <laughs> I know you are here, but you are too silent for me. <laughs> Looks as if some of you are, you're not in Budapest, you are here right now. Jesus is Lord. So what Adam and Eve experienced was a spiritual darkness, spiritual nakedness expose them to all kind of satanic attacks. And so you and I need a covering. We need a covering. 
How do we uh, assess this covering? We must humble ourselves before God and stay where God has placed us. That is the reason God has instituted what we now call the body of Christ, the church. So that you have a place for your spiritual nourishment, a place for spiritual covering and protection. If you are uncovered, that is if you are naked spiritually, you are exposed. Naturally speaking, if you are not dressed up, you are exposed to all kinds of uh, atmospheric attack and, and effects on your body. The weather will affect you. All kinds of things will affect you. Spiritually, the same thing. If you have no covering, you are exposed. That is why in this family of God, everyone that has truly keyed into God here, you are safe. You have no right to be harassed or embarrassed. The devil will not be drunk enough to come and attempt. Even when he tries, he will fail. We we'll always have the last laugh. Why? He that watches over you never sleeps, nor slumbers. So if you submit yourself to him, then he is now responsible. He becomes responsible for your protection. Are you here with me? It's a mutual responsibility. You submit to him, he becomes responsible. If you don't submit, he's not responsible. And that is the reason on earth today or in the world today we have all kinds of chaos and crisis. People say, oh, if God is truly alive, why are these problems everywhere? No, the question is not if God is alive. The question is, have man submitted to God? You that is complaining about God, are you submitted to God? In fact, the reason the fact that you are complaining is a sign that you are not in submission. Are you here with me? Just because God is alive does not solve the problems. If that were the case, nobody would be sick. Nobody would be dying. Lots of poverty all over the world. People are hungry. Crisis, chaos, all kinds of war going on. Why? Because man is not submitted to God. So because of that, man is, God is not responsible for it. When Adam was in submission to God, they lived in the Garden of Eden. And it was where we them. But when they decided to walk away from God, they lost the Garden of Eden. They had to perspire to acquire. In the past, they just went to the tree, plucked it up, and ate it. It was nice. They played with goats and lions and all that. Now, if you think you are so smart, go to the bush and get one lion. I begin to play with it. When you are done, come back and talk to us. It takes another level of dominion now to be able to do that. In the past, it wasn't so. Why? Because we left God. Because of that, he was no longer responsible for us. But I praise God for Matthew eleven twenty eight that says, Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. An open invitation to everybody on the face of the earth. Come! If you come, you will find rest to your souls. If you come, you will find that I am lowly. I am easy. I have a yoke for you, but it's not a yoke of bondage. It's a yoke of togetherness. To put you and I together. God's yoke is not burdensome. In the satanic world, a yoke is a sign of slavery. But with God, it's a sign of togetherness. In other words, you get attached to me. Because you are attached to me, you are safe. You are protected. Nothing happens to you. Nothing, we, nothing evil will come to your dwelling. Are you still here with me? So God has opened the door for you and I today to be engrafted into his family. And I believe you are ready for that. Are you ready for that? It is the will of the Father. The sacrifice that changes and empowers destiny. In Genesis chapter 8, from verse 20, Genesis 8, 20. Are you here? All right. From verse 20, the Bible says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Verse 21, And the Lord smelled a, a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. And in verse 22, while the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest, 
cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Prayer to this God that caused the earth. Are you here with me? He said to Adam, you will perspire to acquire. From the sweat of your face shall you eat. Your days has been shortened on the face of the earth. Now, the Bible continues in Genesis chapter 7 and talks about the wickedness of man. And God speaking, he says, the imagination of the heart of man was evil perpetually. So evil that God himself uh, repented, according to King James Version, that he had created man. He decided to eliminate man from the face of the earth, except, uh, except Noah, who was found righteous. Are you here with me? The entire earth was cursed and destroyed by God. Now we find a man called Noah here. After the ark settled on the mountain, mountain Ararat, according to the scriptures, they came down to the, to, 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 to the background. He built an altar to make a sacrifice to God. He made a sacrifice. Listen to this now. We have no record of Adam or Noah dreaming an angel saying to him, make God a sacrifice. We have no such record. We have no record of God speaking to him, make me a sacrifice. The man took the initiative, spiritual perception, spiritual insight. He knew that if the earth must change, if I must begin to plant and receive, if my family will live in peace on the face of the earth, there is something I must do to appease my God, to make a connection with my God. And the scripture teaches that he made a sacrifice unto the Lord. And God himself accepted the sacrifice and said to him, Noah, for this that you have done, never will the earth be cursed again. From this moment on, planting and harvesting will come. Whenever you sow, you will reap. And that is the reason today you and I are blessed on the earth when we talk about seed time and harvest. That means whenever you sow, you must receive a great harvest coming back to you. But somebody, somewhere before you was responsible for that. What did he do? He made a sacrifice. And the Bible says here, he used clean animals to offer a sacrifice to God. Now, watch this. Principle number one, a sacrifice must be acceptable. A sacrifice must be something that costs you something of great value, that costs you something. It can't be something cheap, something you can do away with, I mean, you can do without. Are you here with me? I, I was going to say something, but <laughs> all right. See, I like giving, and I praise God for giving. When we do, we always, my wife and I, we always like to give the best that we have. If I want to give you, for example, just an example, I'm not doing it for you now, but if I were to give you a pair of shoes, I'm not going to give you a used pair of shoes. I will give you a new one. Cost me something. Something that I would actually like to put on. That when I put it on, I feel good. That's what I would like to give to you. A sacrifice must cost you. It must be something of value. If it has no value to you, then it has no value to God. <laughs> Are you here with me? If, you, if, if it doesn't mean anything to you, then it doesn't mean anything to God. So principle number one, Noah used clean animals. Something of value, something pure, something that is worthy of God. And God accepted a sacrifice. And it became a blessing not only to Noah, but to multiplied generations all through to eternity. Now, while we are still here, turn with me quickly to Malachi chapter number three. Let me break out the scripture here. It wasn't part of my note, but it just came into my mind right now. Here we find God talking about giving as well. Malachi 
Let's, let's go to, I think it should be found in chapter 1. No. Who can help me there? It's funny. I know it's in Malachi. What chapter is that? No, not in 3 8. <clears throat> Okay, chapter 2. Let's go to chapter 2 from verse 1. It says, And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, if you will not take it to your heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already, because you do not take it to heart. Behold, I will rebuke your descendant and spread refuse on your faces, the refuse of your solemn feast. And one will take you away with it. And then you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you. That my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord. My covenant is with it, was with him. One of life and peace. And I gave to them that he might fear me. For he feared me and was reverent before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth. And injustice was not found in him. He walked with me in peace and equity. And I turned away many of his iniquity. For the lips of the priest should keep knowledge, and the people should seek the law from his mouth, for the messenger of the Lord. That's still not what I want to bring out. Is it one? What verse? The 16? Are you speaking English or French? 1 13. Okay, good. 13. It says. You will say, you also say, oh, what a weariness. And you snare at it, says the Lord of hosts. And you bring the stolen, the lame, and the sick. Thus, you bring an offering. Should I accept it from your hands, says the Lord? Are you seeing that? Verse 12, but you profane it. In that you say the, the table of the Lord is defied and its fruit is food. Its food is contemptible. You also say, oh, what a weariness. And you snare at it, says the Lord of hosts, and bring the stolen, the lame, and the sick. Thus you bring an offering. Should I accept this from you, says the Lord? God says he will not accept any seed, any offering that is not of value. Something that has been stolen, they wasted. What is good for nothing? You're discarding it yourself, so you feel God is the one to give it to. In another verse of scripture, if it's not the Malachi, it should be in Zechariah. He said, he talks about. He said, if you go to your governor and you give your governor this, will your governor even accept it? Verse eight, one eight. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, let's take it from seven. Thank you very much, everybody. You offer defied food on my altar, but say, in what way have, I, have we defied you? By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer then to your governor, would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably? Says the Lord of hosts. Do you see that? So God is saying that a sacrifice must have some quality to it. If it has no quality to it, if it has no value to it, even man will not accept it. Yet we bring it to God and we expect God to accept it. And maybe that is the reason some of our seeding have not brought the change that we desire. Because it has not been done properly. But our goal as we look at expansion and looking at all of these series of messages we have been considering since the beginning of the year, is to help you understand that there is a prerequisite. There is a requirement. There is a qualification. The seed must qualify. You see, friend, listen to this now. I am not a money preacher, but I'm a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in the gospel, it teaches about prosperity. It teaches about money. It teaches about healing and health. All, all kinds of blessings of God. So my responsibility is to teach you the truth. 
Because if I don't, I am not fulfilling my mission. I'm not fulfilling my destiny. In your breakthrough is my fulfillment. When I see you breaking through, then I have joy. It means I'm doing it properly. See, see, when we obey correctly, there will always be manifestation. Because God cannot lie. God is not a cheat. The scriptures are principles. And the principles have been put in place. Whenever we align ourselves with the principles, they are bound to work. Are you here? No, you are not here now. I need somebody here with me today. All right. And so we discover now in Genesis chapter 8 that Noah sacrificed and God accepted the sacrifice and the curse was removed. And then God said, seed time and harvest will be perpetuated for eternity. So that whenever you sow, whether a natural seed or a financial seed, you are supposed to receive the harvest from God. Are you here with me? Okay. Praise God. Are you still here with me? Listen now. This concept of getting something for nothing is unscriptural. It is a modern day teaching that you can get something for nothing. I have not found it in the Bible yet. Even your salvation costs you something. Do you know that? You had to believe, you had to accept. Even your salvation costs you something. You had to believe. You had to accept. So the idea of getting something for nothing is not found in the Bible. You have to accept it. You have to believe it for it to be effected in your life. In John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, As many as believed in his name. You believed in his name. Then he gave you power to become a child of God. If you don't believe, then you are not a child of God. So the idea of getting something for nothing is not found in the Bible. It will cost you something. Maybe your time, maybe your city, maybe your prayer, all kinds of things. You must release something from you. Listen, you know, and you see, listen, listen to this now. We talk about rain falling. Do you know there is no rain in heaven or somewhere? What comes down is really a process of evaporation and condensation. The earth has to release water. And then it comes right back to the earth again. It's a natural process. And it's a spiritual principle. That something must live here for something to come back here. Even the earth itself has to release by evaporation and the condensation and the rain comes back as rain. So if it is dried and refuses to evaporate, nothing comes down. Naturally, it works that way. So it works spiritually as well. So, so, so just forget about the idea of something for nothing. It's not written anywhere. It's not written anywhere. You may have a free lunch, but it's not really free because somebody paid for it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> we, we, live in, we, live, we live in a culture where everybody wants everything for free. Buy one and get three for free. It's a lie. It's actually a lie. The price of that one covers the three you're getting for free. <laughs> but they believe it. They run, they go and buy 20 of it. And I say, uh, you know, in case it becomes more expensive in the future, they buy 20 more of it. And they never use it. <laughs> uh, tell your neighbor, it is not free. Stop deceiving yourself. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Friend, you must understand, therefore, that God has honored you by everything that God has done all through the scriptures and through the instrumentality of his servants. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, I'll show you something else again as you begin to build up. 2 Samuel chapter 24. 
Have you found it? Are you there? Second yeah. Samuel 24, and we're looking at verse 24. In verse 24, the Bible says here, yeah, then the king said to Arana, no, I will surely buy it from you at a price. Nor will I offer bond offerings to the Lord my God with that which cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the ozin for 50 shekels of silver. What is the story here? David had done something he wasn't supposed to do. I want to show you a mystery of a sacrifice now. That would be principle number two. David had numbered the people of Israel. Took a census of the people. And it wasn't commanded by God. And that happens a lot with church and pastors. This is why I have never counted fit factor ministries. I have never sat back to think how many people came to church today. Or I have never instructed anybody to count. I don't do that. It's not my responsibility. Are you here with me? David did it out of pride. Out of pride. Oh, how many people am I ruling over? How many people are my subjects? And God got angry because they are God's people. They are not David's people. And because of that, God got angry at David. and gave him three options. Option number one, you are pursued by your enemy for three months. Option number two, you lose your throne for three months. Option number three, people will pay the price. People will die for what you have done. In other words, I will execute judgment against you. And David was smart. He said, if people, if people pursue me, they will kill me. They will never have mercy. God will have mercy more than man will have mercy. Lord, I want to fall into your hands. Now, the Bible says the people of Israel began to die. Within three days, 70,000 people died because of what David did. Now, David saw what was doing the angel that was killing the people. So he approached that place. And the angel requested for a sacrifice. I think so, if I don't be mistaken now, a sacrifice was requested. Now, the man who owned this land is a Jebusite. He wasn't even an Israelite. They, they, when David saw the man, and the man saw David, he said to David, please take the land, make a sacrifice to God. I would even give you my oxen, my tractors, making the farm. I will give them to you. You just made a sacrifice to God. David said, no, 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 no. I will not offer to God something that cost me nothing. That is not the principle. Listen to the principle here. By offering up a sacrifice to God, he abated and averted for that destruction of his life, for that destruction of his people. What does that mean? When you are going through a challenge, don't only pray. Many of us are prayer machines. But we're not giving machines. Don't only pray. Pray and sow a seed. I have seen it in my personal life. When I have situations, I have prayed and prayed and prayed. And prayer doesn't seem to be working. I run into sowing seed. And whenever I release the seed from my hand, that is the end of that situation. Time and again, time and again, time and again, it has happened. As a matter of fact, about just last month, I began to have some insight to some situations that were arising. Of course, you know we pray. My wife and I began to deal with it through prayer. And we kept dealing with it. We kept dealing with it. We kept dealing with it. And for five consecutive days, God just kept telling me the situation was still there. I said, wait a minute. What, what kind of prayer should I pray now? I prayed at home, came to church, prayed, ran to the altar, prayed, did all kinds of things. God said the situation was still just there. I said, something is missing. Something is missing. What must be missing? Oh, a seed. Quickly. I took a seed. 
And I sent the seed away. And that was the end of that situation. 